Hi, welcome to Embedded Programming. And in this video, we're going to be installing Formatter on this board called a Node MCU. Now, what is nice about this board is that it has Wi Fi built in. Now, the Wi Fi chip it's using or the Wi Fi module it's using is from a company called Espresset. And specifically, it's using the ESP8266 Wi Fi module. Now, you can get a number of um, embedded boards with a ESP8266 on it, like from I um from Sparkfunk or Adafruit, for example. Um, this one, I bought it off of eBay. Um, I don't know exactly who makes this Node MCU version, but the nice thing besides having, the other nice thing about this board besides having Wi-Fi is that it's Arduino compatible. So if you follow my first tutorial about installing Arduino, then you are all set. And the third thing I like is that even though you don't have a lot of pins, the IO pins that you do have, three of them are pulse width modulation. Now, we may not get to look at pulse width modulation in this video, but we will very soon, and we'll see how we can use it for dimming LEDs and for controlling motors especially. That's one of the things that we're gonna really be using it for. Okay, so let's get started. So like I said, this board is Arduino compatible. So the first thing you wanna do is to make sure that you have your Arduino ID installed. Install. If you don't have it installed, please look at that first video where I go through how to install Arduino. So, and a serial driver so you can talk to whichever device embedded board you have. Okay. While my Arduino is starting up, there's one other thing I you will need to do if you're going to connect this board to your computer, and that's being able to see on which port it shows up. So, if you look at my second video in which I talk about this GORT program, GORT, and I have it installed already. Um, you can use GORT scan and then you can say like serial or USB and it would list the number of USB or serial devices you have connected. The nice thing about GORT is that it's cross-platform so it runs in Windows, Linux and Mac the same way. It's a Go binary. Now if you don't have that installed, what you can do is go to the GORT website. Now I've been trying to go to the GORT website for a long time, GORT.io and it hasn't been loading for me. And so if that is the case for you still when you're watching this video, you might wanna just go to the GitHub page, which is github.com forward slash hybrid group forward slash gourd. And if you go there, don't worry about this link, it's still taking you back to here where it doesn't work. Instead, what you wanna do is you can either, if you're using Mac and you have homebrew install, you can use brew install, which is how I install mine, or you can just simply build it. Since we're talking about using Go anyway, for doing embedded programming, you should have Go install. And so what you do is click on this download link, click, click this button to copy the URL. And what we're going to do is clone Gort. So if I do LS, you should see I don't have it here. So I'll do git clone. I'll paste that link that I copied and it cloned the repo for me. Now, if you do not have Git, but you do have Go, cause you need Go to build this. When you click this drop down link, just click um, download zip, extracting it, and then change to the directory where that extracts to. And then now I can simply say go build, and it will build Gort for me. As you can see, there's Gort.go right here. And if I do ls minus lrt, we'll see that oh, it just built this for me. Now, I have Gort on my path already. I showed that before, but I can run the one that I just built by just doing this. And there you go. I can also run the scan serial command as before. And actually, I'll use my one of my favorite commands, which is watch. If you're on a Linux or Mac slash Unix type operating system, you can install watch and do something like this, which would keep running this command by default every two seconds. And so it allowed me to just see um, the output from a command and if something is gonna change. I can connect to my device and see which ports it shows up on. So I plug that in and pretty soon I expect to see something change here and it does. And so I can highlight this as the port that that device was just connected to because it wasn't there before. So, okay, so now we have our device successfully being identified by our operating system. Now, another thing you can do at Gort if you watch a second video 
is that you can try to use it to install formatter. Now remember, what we're trying to do in this video is install formatter. Why? The purpose of installing formatter is so that we can use Go to control our embedded devices. Why we want to use Go? Because Go has a package that uses the formatter protocol to talk to embedded devices. And that allows us to sort of write code in this one language that I hope that we love. And the formatter protocol is what's going to allow us to control our embedded board. Right now, the board does not have formatter, but to install formatter, which is a protocol for communicating with microcontrollers, we need to have it installed on the board. Then our Go, Go Bot library will be able, which is a package for Go, will be able to talk to the formatter running server running on our board. One way of doing that is to install Gort, which we just did. And now you can say Gort. And if you, since this board is Arduino compatible, you can say Gort Arduino. And you can see there's a command here, upload formatter. Now, if you just install Gort only, you might need to do Gort Arduino install to install this Ardood um, binary. But try running the upload command first, and if it's our dude binary is missing, it will let you know. So I can say that. I can say upload formatter. That's what we're trying to install, and the port, and there we go. Now, I know this is going to fail on my system. For some odd reason, on this particular Mac, it fails to install formatter on the Arduino compatible board. If I try this exact same thing, on another Mac that I have, which is identical in every way to this Mac. And I try to keep both Macs identical with it, even down to the same software and configuration because I don't like when I move between computers, they're different. And so I do not know why it works on that other board, but this is one way, if this works for you, then you're out of the game, you already have formatted install on your microcontroller, and now you can skip ahead. If, like me, Gorge is now working for you to be able to install formatter, let's go the other way and use the Arduino IDE, just as we did to install formatter for the Arduino board. So the way we'll do that is we'll go to our Arduino IDE, and here it is. Um, look like I had some error messages from before. Um, I'll ignore that for now. I don't know how to clear that out. Um, but one of the things you can do now that you have your board connected is you can say, well, configure your Arduino IDE to connect to that board. Now I've already installed the board definition for my Arduino um, IDE so that it can recognize my board. So if I go to tools and I go to boards, you can see I have the Node MCU processor version 1.0 ESP 12E. That's the board that I have here. And so that's selected. Now let's imagine I selected another board like this. If I go back and I look at tools, you'll see it changed the set of configuration and parameters I can specify. So each board has a set of configuration that it needs to be set. And how does Arduino IDE you know this? Well, if you go to tools board, you might not see this node MCU board available. And that is because the developers for Arduino IDE does not ship every possible board definition out there because that would be a lot. So to make a small binary with just a few definitions, and you can extend it. Now, how do you extend it? You go to the Arduino preferences. Now on Windows, it might be in some other menu called settings or something. I don't know what it is on Windows, but basically find up settings slash preferences menu, click on that, and then you'll see it says additional board managers URL. Now it says that if you put your mouse over this, it tells you at all you can use a comma separated list of URLs, but I would say just click on this little button to the side and open up this window. I just simply put, each board definition on a line by itself. And when you save it, it's gonna take care of putting the comma. Now, here you can see I have two additional board def managers definition URLs. Um, this is for another Arduino-like board that I have. This is for the ESP8266 um, base board, which is the Node MCU, and this is the URL. Now, how do I know which URL to use? Well, there are a number of ways, but I'll show you one of the easiest ways to, to find this information. If you click on this button that says click for a list of unofficial boards support URLs, if you click on that link, it will take you to this website. This unofficial list of third party board supported URLs. And while here, if you do a search 
for node MCU or ESP8266, you will see here is that very same URL that I have in my board manager um, URLs. And so just copy this link, as you can see, assuming that you're using the exact same board or any board that's supported by the ESP8266 um, module, that's the way you want to use. You copy this link and then you go back now to Arduino and you add it here. If you don't have anything, but it's going to be the only one. If you have other boards, add it to the list. And then you say, okay. Once you say okay there and then okay again, now you can go to tools and then boards and then boards manager. You still would not see the set of boards. What you have installed or what you have specified is the URL where to fetch boards definition, but you haven't fetched those board definition yet. So you want to go to boards manager. And then after this loads and it download updates its index, then you want to search for ESP8266, for example, or whatever board you're using. And then once this list show up, notice it's ESP8266 by the ESP8266 community. Select the latest version and then click the install button. Once that's completed, you close this and now you go back yet a second time to tools board. And now you should see the list of additional ESP8266 board. Notice there are a number of them. The one I want is this guy. This is the one I'm using, but select the one that you're using, whichever one you have. Once you select that, go back yet a third time to tools and you'll see now I have my board selected. That's great, but it has the upload speed. This is one of the things that you might want to change. If it's not, notice how mine is set to this low speed. It will work on this speed. But if I wanted to go even faster, I will put it on this, um, the maximum speed allowed, broad rate allowed for my ID that is showing me. Um, I'm not going to waste time to show, well, let me just show you anyway, show you the difference just in case. Um, you know what? That's wasting our time. So just trust me, use the highest speed possible. Um, if it doesn't work on the highest speed, just keep going back until you find a speed that, the fastest speed that works, okay? Um, by default, that low speed, it's going to work, but it takes longer. So my board is an 80 megahertz board that's set by default because the board definition said it's 80 megahertz and I don't have to change it. And so notice a lot of defaults are correct. Like I said, the only thing is select the board, change your upload speed because while this lower speed might work, it might just be fast if you go with a higher speed and then set the port. And my port in this case is correct. All right. So once I set those three things, I don't need to set anything else. There are many other options. I don't need to set anything else. Now I want to test that I have this correct, the correct board. So what I can do is go to file examples, basic, and then blink. If you remember, we did this very same thing when we had our ID installed and the USB port configured and so on. We did the same thing for our Arduino board to make sure that oh, we can at least upload some simple Arduino um, C++ code. Just remember, this is by default. This Arduino IDE support is really using C++, a simplified version of C++. So built-in pin 13, I believe, is what it is for our board, but we don't have to worry about it because the board definition have all that stuff. So if we just click this button to upload, and we should see that we're using Node MCU, blah, blah, blah. It's compiling. If we look over here, we should see this light blinking. This is the, the receive transmit light. Um, and we should see it start blinking once it's ready to upload and it's um, uploading. Um, let's see how long it's going to take. There we go. And yeah, that's blinking so fast. You really can't see it. It's finished. And now you should see it reset and this blink light is going to blink once a second, which is what we have. So that tells us that oh, we have the correct board definition and we can connect and talk to this port. So let's change this a bit. Let's change this to like 500 and let's change this to like 100 something like that or maybe even 200 and then let's upload it and run again just to make sure that all um, So it's compiling and it's gonna start uploading in a bit. It's uploading and then we should see our LED once it's completed we should start blinking much faster. So great. We have control of board. It's working So now we need to install formatter. All right, so remember formatter is this piece of code that runs on our board and while it's running on our board, we, it's a protocol. We can send commands to it to tell it what to do. So instead of writing code like this, we can write code in Go, and Go is going to use a formatted client to our library to talk to our board that already has a formatted server and do the exact same thing. So let's do that now.
So how do we install Formato? Well, if we go back to the GoBot website and we look at these 35 platform supports, let's click platforms. And if we look, we'll see ESP8266. We click on that and scroll down and it tells you exactly that, you know, GoBot provides an adapter for the ESP8266 as well as Arduino compatible microcontroller that supports Formato, which our board does. For more information about the ESP8266 platform, head over there. But if we scroll right past the code example, it tells you how to install the ESP8266 add-on, Arduino add-on. It gives you the URL here, but we already did that and we installed it. So we've done all of this already. Okay. Now we have, we need to do the format in upload formatter. Now I said that this board has Wi-Fi. So the way we're going to be connecting to this board from our Go program is over Wi-Fi, not USB, um, but rather right Wi-Fi. So we can go to the formatter builder website. So let's open that. We'll go there in a minute. And see, so it says on the configure connection, choose Wi-Fi as the connection type. And this gives us the ability now to build products or projects that are not connected or tied to the computer, right? Because we can just connect it to over Wi-Fi. We'll see that in a bit just now. And so it says on the choose Wi-Fi and then choose ESP826 Wi-Fi board or shield. And then enter your SSID and all this other stuff. You'll see we don't have to actually enter it there. But the thing to note is these different core features that we need. Digital input formatter, digital output to be able to control digital input output pins, analog input and output pins, and I2C. So we go to the formatter builder website and we want to choose how we're going to connect to this board. We don't want to do serial. We want to do Wi-Fi. And since we're using Wi-Fi, which Wi-Fi are we using? ESP8266 module. And what type of security? In my case, it's WPA. Here you can put in your SSID. You don't have to put in your password. Or do you want to connect a formatter? So this is where we use it as a server, where once we upload this formatter code and our board restarts, it's going to start a formatter server and listen on port 3030, and our Go application is the one that initiates the connection and connects to our board versus if we made it a client and now we have to specify a server where that client needs to connect which means our board comes up and it initiates a connection to this server so we want it to be a server instead and we're going to act as a client and then we'll leave everything else blank up there in terms of networking um i don't want to specify an ip address i'll see what ip address it gets and remember we need this core module we need digital input output analog input output i2c um, for now, I'm going to build mine with servo formatter. Uh, I don't want one wire. I'll build with stepper, um, serial, accelerometer, I guess, support. That's fine. And then formatter schedule. I don't need all these other contributing modules like encoders and stuff. But if you want to choose those, up to you. Read the documentation. So now I just specify a file name. And so you can see I've done this a few times. So I will put today's date and uh i don't know i think today is the 25th i'm not even sure and so i'll click download and it's already downloaded it's 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 finished and so i will go here and as you can see here is this download i just created that's the file name and i'll open this notice is just one file called whatever formatted da, 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 dot ino it is just a arduino sketch file now, I tell you that Arduino is really C++ code, but they call the sketch file, they rename it as .ino. You can also open .h file and stuff. So I'll go back to Arduino, and then I'll navigate to that file. So I'll do file, open. It's in my download directory. Let's go to downloads. Here it is, and I'll open this file. There it is. And so ignore everything else that comes below all this stuff. The only thing that you need to do is go to like line nine here for me and it says uncomment to enable debugging over serial yep i'll take that i'll do that i want to see some debugging information you see why we want to see debugging information the other thing i want to be able to do is this is my wi-fi network ssid so i will change that and this is my wi-fi password i'll change that too so once i have that done now i'll all I need to do is upload this to the Arduino board by clicking this button. 
chances are this will not work for you and the reason why it will not work for you is because notice this also include files called digital input format and all this other stuff you will not have those things already installed so one of the easiest way to install formatted today is directly from within our arduino so what you do is you go to so tools manage library and if you do a search for formatter so the region version of arduino arduino ide one that's six and above i think one that's six eight or something but one that's six something and above and i think we're using like one eight now um so if you're watching this video you're absolutely using one of the latest arduino um, id if you're not then just install the latest one and so you simply search for formatter here and as you can see formatter by the formatter developer come up and here you select again the latest version click install you can also install configurable formatter but if you just install this formatter by formatter developer that's all you really need and the configurable formatter is the one we're using here um, so you, you already configure it online. What would happen if you install a configurable format is you'd open up a file and you'd have to set these on comment a bunch of things that you want or um, to be installed. But we did the configurable formatter online, but it's just that we need the formatter library to be there already. So once you do tools, manage libraries, install formatter, search for formatter and install it, then close. Then you can come back now to this editor and upload formatter. Now, this is the formatter that we've configured. Remember, we've configured it with our um, Wi-Fi password and all this other good stuff here. Okay. So we wait. It's compiling. And if you see any error message about can't find, you know, like, um, something can't find analog output formatter, that's because you did not in install the formatter library okay so make sure you do that okay so i'll fast forward when this finished compiling and upload it's a little bit big so let's see it's finished compiling and now it start uploading and so we can see that there uploading and it's finished now here's the thing no format is on our board our board is reset and it's waiting there for us to connect to it using formatter protocol the thing is, we don't know what our IP address is. So if we go to tools and then go to serial monitor and then we click, you know, the serial monitor, here we go. And we click this. Now, if we leave this open, we did not leave this open the first time, but if we leave it open now, click on upload again. And then we look at our, our serial monitor what's going to happen is the formatted code that we're uploading will try to connect to our Wi-Fi port and spit out some information, as you can see. And there you go. You can see now this is my IP address for my ESP8266. And so format is up, it has an IP address. So great. At this point, we're finished. All you need to do is remember your IP address. I can close this. I can quit the Arduino IDE because we're not going to be writing C, C code um, anymore. I don't want to save that. But it's up to you if you want to save the configuration that you have um, in case you need to redo it the next time. And so let's go back to GoBot. And if we scroll up, we'll see that it says, for this, to connect to ESP8266, this is the example. Now. I'm not going to go through everything about GoBot code now, but I'll review some of the code. So let's go to our command line and we're in the go GORD directory. Now I don't need GORD um, source code, so I'm going to delete it. That just was to show you how to build it if you can download it. And so I'm going to start up my Visual Studio Code editor in a directory I've already created for Go code. Now notice the directory is empty. But I was like starting off by creating a go that um, mod file and the module is going to be, let's call it ESP8266. And then I'll create another file, which is going to be our main.go. 
I'll paste the code that we downloaded just now. Uh, save that. The first thing we're doing is we created, we're using a formatter package to create a new TCP adapter. An adapter is sort of like an abstraction for the thing that we're going to connect to. And so you can see it says that, oh, I want to connect to an adapter that's listening on this TCP IP um, socket. So for us, it was 10.10.100.100. And we configure it to listen on port 30. If you remember when we did the configurable formatter, we said, oh, the port it should listen on was on port 3030. And it should pretend to be a server, hence while we're connecting to it. We're going to create a driver, which is something that we want to control on that board. And it's going to be an LED. So we do LED, new LED driver and it's on that adapter. And the pin that we're going to be connecting to as a string is pin two. So I'm going to trust that that is the pin that we were blinking just now. So pin two in GoBot probably means something else when you use the Arduino IDE, as we'll see sometimes. That's what it is. I'll leave it unchanged for now unless it does not work. Then we have this anonymous function. This is our work function. The work function is what we pass to the robot that we create and we start the robot. So what is our work function? So the nice thing is that GoBot package gives us this every function which takes a time that duration value and a function that we should call, you know, every whatever the duration is. The every function does not wait until the previous invocation finishes before calling the next one. It's going to call it every second. That's it, or whatever you specify. So every second, we want to toggle the LED. Now, we could have said every second, turn the LED on, wait one second, then turn it off, or every two seconds, rather. Two seconds, first second, turn it on, wait a second, turn it off. We could, there are no more ways to do the same thing. But this toggle makes it super easy to accomplish the same thing that we're doing in our Arduino our C++ code. So now we have some work to do that's specified here. Now we can say, let's create a new robot and you could give it any name you want. So we call it um, ESP8266 bot, for example. It's just a string. This is a slice of connection, which is essentially, what are all the boards that are running formatter I wanna to connect to? So this is really cool. So if you didn't watch a second video yet in this series, please check that out. I explain what formatter is. And I also tell you a little bit about GoBot and what it's trying to do. Notice it's trying to allow you to control a number of devices or microcontroller or using Go over the formatter protocol. And here is an example of where we can have multiple of these devices. Imagine I had several of these devices. I can call one adapter one, adapter two. And if these things were like connected to doors and windows, I can monitor all of them from this one Go code. I can read what's going on on one device and then write out something else to be done on another device. So those are the complicated things. So basically you just specify the set of devices you want to control by this robot, this one, this robot you're creating. And the list, the list of devices, which would be all the devices that you have instantiated on across all adapters. Now, the reason why is because GoBot is going to try and establish a connection to those devices and then try to start those devices. Again, a little bit beyond where we are, but know that you can stop and start a device. And so it needs to be able to have a list of devices and know what it should initialize. Starting the device is basically like initializing that device. And then this is our work function. So it's gonna start first by making a connection. If connection is successful, start the devices. If those are all good, then go to work. And then this is gonna be happen when you call the robot that start function. Here we're just simply creating the robot, but this is when we start doing work. Okay, let's just go run our code. So I'll open up a terminal here and let's do go build. And this should give me an executable. And there is ESP8266, which is the module name. And if I run it and we watch, we shall see that oh, we start in the robot called ESP8266 bot initiating the connection, starting connections. And there's only one connection we have to this device that's um, this IP address, port, whatever. Then we're starting the devices. And the only device we have is this LED on pin two. And the work function started, start doing work. And if you look on the device, you'll see we're blinking another pin, not pin 13. That's because pin two is one of the pin that was tied to serial when we we're uploading serial code. But that's okay. We have a LED on pin two and we can blink it. Now, what about that other pin 13 it looked like? Is that, was that pin 13 over here? Well, it could have been. 
And so we can keep trying to find out if that's been charging or not. Notice our Go code is running and it's not exiting because it's continuously talking over the protocol to this device. No, I'm not doing this over serial, right? And I can prove that by, let me just disconnect our board here. And right now the go butt thing is waiting and I'll just use this battery. And so let's use this battery to connect to this board instead just to show you how cool this is. So this is going to start up and it's going to start running. So it's start up and it's listening to port uh, 2030, but our Go code was already running. So what we need to do is stop this and then restart it. And if I restart it, you should see the light blinking again. And so that's the advantage being able to have your device not be tied to any computer, but be disconnected and you talk to them over Wi-Fi. This is really, really cool. Hopefully you are excited being able to control a device over Wi-Fi and do the same thing we were able to do with our Arduino board, except our Arduino was connected over serial and tied to the computer. In the next video, we'll try to get Formata running on some other boards. Uh, remember I have the Raspberry Pi, I have the BeagleBone. We should try to get, this, get it running on those things. And then we'll move on and try and see if maybe we can do, or maybe I might skip that since it's, the process is gonna be pretty much the same. So if somebody wants me to do it for BeagleBone or Raspberry Pi, let me know. Otherwise, I'll probably skip and then just start looking at controlling other things. Now I have this thing called a Groove Shield, G-R-O-V-E. Um, if you don't know about it, take a look, research it. There's Groove Shield for Arduino, Raspberry Pi, BeagleBone, and I have one for this Node MCU also. And so I'll be playing with the Groove Shield probably um, in the next video, unless somebody said they wanna see me do Formata on one of my other boards. Okay, take care, see you in the next video, bye.